If you've watched this channel for a long time, you will have known my opinion and stance on bomber aircraft within War Thunder. It's been a couple of years since I've revisited that video and I will do at some point during this year. However, today's topic comes out of a discussion I was having with a friend. More so, he was talking about the possibility of having supersonic bombers in War Thunder. I was like, well, actually, there could be a caveat to that one. While it is certainly possible, there are constraints with that. So here's why supersonic aircraft, particularly jet aircraft, at least in the strategic bomber role, are not necessarily going to be probable within the game. Let's start off with the obvious thing, the maps. War Thunder realistic battles and arcade battles would probably have least amount of room for these types of aircraft to operate. If you're playing Enduring Confrontation or you're playing Sim, there wouldn't be an issue, but considering Sim repair costs and several other issues that persist in Sim, the average player isn't really going to bother unlocking a strategic bomber, particularly if, even if it's supersonic, because is there really a point? Also, the term supersonic strategic bombers is a bit misleading as, well, the aircraft typically cruise subsonically for most of the flight, so really they only accelerate before doing an, an initial bombing run. Now, of course, we have the Arados, the B-57s, and we've also got several other jet attack types in-game now, for, particularly with the first supersonic aircraft, at least bomber aircraft, the Yak-28. That thing is a twin-engine monster, usually used for reconnaissance. There are several variants in-game, which would be nice to see in the Russian tech tree, eventually. But it spurs a bit of a conversation from where this starts. There are other types, supersonic strategic bombers, B-58 Hustler, the, the Assault Mirage R4, Tupolev Tu-22, which you saw in the thumbnail, maybe the General Dynamic uh, FB uh, 111A, the Rockwell B-1, and the Tu-160, as well as the B-1 Lancer. And there's plenty of other types, experimental types like the BAC TSR-2, and several other things. But for the most part, there isn't a great deal of strategic supersonic bombers. Of course, you could go on to talk about the Vulcan, or maybe the... B-52, or for that matter, the Tu-95 as other options as, I guess, additions to the game. But considering how high tier gameplay plays at the moment with Missile Meta, good luck getting your, I guess, slow as all hell B-52 into orbit before getting missiled you know, after you try and take out a base. The issue isn't the deployment of the aircraft themselves, They'd be perfectly fine as sort of vehicles that you unlock passively. Whether or not player base actually goes to play them is one thing, but really it's about balancing the bomb loads on each given aircraft. Because let's face it, a B-52 with 70,000 pounds of bombs or 32,000 kilograms, or a Tu-95 with 55,000 pounds or 25,000 kilograms of bombs isn't really something that is going to be too welcomed in at least the balancing department. Playing a match here in the Stuka, where we've got a couple of bombers on the enemy team and a couple of bombers on the friendly team, and they're currently duking it out to see who can actually take out the airfield first. The issue here is, well, it's low tiers, and low tiers doesn't really matter for the most extent, except for the fact that there are no fighters left, and now I'm having to play the fighter role and trying to climb up to get that PBY. Again, you see the annoyance here, and this plays out through top tier as well, no matter what aircraft it is, if it's a HE-177, whether it is a, a BV-238, whether it's a B-17 or a B-29, and let's not mention repair costs. How are you going to feasibly balance these things while there is the existence of other, like, active, uh, more advanced platforms and Cold War fighters? Because, let's, let's be real here, the F-4 Phantom carries a bomb load, that you'd probably be fine with. And again, it's really sad to say this, but jet technology from the 50s is most likely going to be dead on arrival. As such, you're going to see issues where aircraft that are coming out in future development periods, for example, later Vietnam and earlier, and some of those earlier prototype one-off vehicles, will probably end up by being premium or event vehicles because they just don't fit with the current game. And that, that's really the sideline issue here. If you were to have maps like the Enduring Confrontation, like we've seen at top tier realistic battles recently, then of course the supersonic, you know, and even, you know, general tactical bombers would be useful in War Thunder. 
but for the most part, their use is rather limited. In War Thunder, we have two types of ground targets. There are your main objectives, particularly ground vehicles or static pillboxes or just units that are in front of the, well, basically the front line. And then there are base bombing. And when you complete, the, or at least bomb out all the ground units, that wins the game. If you go out to bomb all the base bombing points, however, you then get an option to go destroy an airfield. Once you've destroyed the airfield, it's game over effectively. The easiest path to winning a game is essentially by destroying all of those bases and then going after the enemy airfield. How is it exactly good gameplay? I understand doing it for a bit of a grind, a bit of a challenge, a bit of a, a bit of fun once in a while, or you're grinding a bombing task, or you're doing an Operation Winter or Operation Summer or something like that. Generally speaking, these aircraft are certainly a little more useless to your team than ever, which is why they re basically restricted the limit on a bomber aircraft to four aircraft per team. How do you then convert uh, some of these principles and uh, from the real world and at least allow them to come into game? There is no feasible way that that can be achieved. If it took Ghost Entertainment five years to put in the Avro Shackleton, can you imagine how long it would take them to put in supersonic or even later to war tactical, Cold War tactical bombers, you know? I'm of two minds here. They're not exactly practical vehicles. What are you going to do? Carpet bomb the whole entire map with a B-52 when ground forces? Is there going to be suitable enough anti-air protection? Well, they're kind of a bit broken as is, aren't they? And then there's the question of nuclear capability, or at least missile capability. I know the Vulcan could carry air-to-air -air missiles. It, it could also carry nuclear-guided bombs. But for the most part, a lot of them could, you know, be armed with missiles or aerial bombs and nuclear armed uh, weapons loadouts as well. So how that would play out in a match, I don't necessarily know. I don't really want to be taking off on my airfield and then all of a sudden having a friendly decide that he wants to bomb our airfield with a nuke and destroy everyone. Haha, <laughs> the B-52 is up there watching as all the Air 4 Phantoms on the ground are now burning to a crisp. Magical, I guess. That's that's what you call the typical War Thunder experience, let alone what would happen in an actual given, like, realistic match. But other than the map constraints, and obviously the weapons loadout, we've got the aircraft to intercept them. So there isn't really a problem with them being added, that is probably a positive. We've also got the missiles, which can do radar locking, and so on and so forth, so there are plenty of options out there for us to destroy these, uh, airfield camping motherfuckers but hey let me know what you think in the comments down below i'd be very interested to hear what you have to say on the matter is there a potential use for strategic aircraft like this like the b-52 the vulcan or even supersonic types like the tupolev tu-160 or the b-1 lancer who knows let me know what you think in the comments down below my name is ash thank you much for watching and i'll catch you in the next one